In this video, I will be discussing blood pressure control, specifically the baroreflex. Then I will talk about the regulation of ventilation through the central and peripheral chemoreceptors. To end the video, I will briefly talk about how these two regulatory systems can work together or their crosstalk, as it says on the slide. The baroreflex is what helps to control blood pressure in the body. So when there's a change in blood pressure, the baroreceptors, which are located on the carotid artery and the aorta, sense it, and they signal to the cardiovascular control center in the medulla. This control center then may send signals through either the sympathetic or the parasympathetic neurons. And I'll talk more about the effects of the parasympathetic and sympathetic systems in the next section of this video. Here I'll use an example so we can look at some specifics of the barrel reflex. Let's say that you just stand up from watching this video so your body has a lower than normal blood pressure. That means that the carotid and aortic baroreceptors will fire less. The cardiovascular control center would then increase the sympathetic response. So remember that the cardiovascular control center does both um, parasympathetic and sympathetic, but in this case it would be increasing the sympathetic and then having a decreased parasympathetic response. So the sympathetic nervous system would act on several, three different things. So first of all, the arterioles directly, and then the veins through the skeletal muscular pump, so not the veins directly, um, the ventricles, and also the SA node. And the parasympathetic also um, innervates the SA node, but in this case, we'll just focus on the sympathetic. So this, this increase in the sympathetic nervous system would then cause vasoconstriction, an increased force of contra contraction, increased heart rate, increased peripheral resistance, and increased cardiac output. So I'll just write the last two here on the slide. And all of these results here all of these increases would eventually lead to an increased blood pressure. Now I'm going to narrow in on vasopressin and its role in regulating body fluid after acute hemorrhage and dehydration. Vasopressin has two roles. One, it retains water in the body and two, it constricts blood vessels. During dehydration, there is a high serum osmolarity. The osmoreceptors, which are mainly found on the hypothalamus, will detect this change and will stimulate the release of vasopressin from the hypothalamus. This will act on the kidney to retain water and restore osmolarity. After acute hemorrhage, the blood volume will be low, so the stretch receptors will signal less frequently. A high level of signal from the stretch receptors inhibits the release of vasopressin, so when the stretch receptors are firing less frequently, the inhibition will be inhibited, and vasopressin will be released to act on the kidney to retain water and restore blood volume. Okay, let's move on to talk about respiratory regulation through the central chemoreceptor reflex for CO2 pressure. This will be looking at the cerebral capillaries and the exchange of gases across the blood-brain barrier. Hydrogen can't cross the blood-brain barrier, so when there are high levels of carbon dioxide in the blood, the CO2 will cross the barrier and interact with water to eventually create hydrogen ion and bicarbonate. The hydrogen is able to be a ligand for the central chemoreceptors, which send signals to the respiratory control centers to increase ventilation. The peripheral chemoreceptor reflex for low oxygen levels is less common and acts on the glomus cells in the carotid and aortic bodies. The low O2 closes potassium channels to depolarize the cell and open voltage-gated calcium channels. Calcium causes the exocytosis of dopamine to trigger an action potential signal to increase ventilation. However, in order for there to be any significant 
activation of this reflex in the body, the partial pressure of oxygen must decrease below about 60 millimeters mercury. So like I said, it's not very common. In the labs you'll be doing in class, you will study how the cardiovascular and respiratory systems crosstalk in several different situations. One way these affect each other is through the activation of the peripheral chemoreceptors, which increases ventilation. This would also increase the heart rate and vasoconstriction. Another clinical example is in cerebral ischemia, which is a condition where there is low delivery of oxygen to the brain because of low blood flow. This condition directly activates the cardiovascular centers in the medulla, which then produces extreme peripheral vasoconstriction and tachycardia.